Before we start, I want everyone first to settle down on your seats. Good morning, Sir Aklon. Good morning, Dan Kirk. How are you? I'm really fine today. It is a wonderful morning right now. Good sunshine, thank God. It's a good blessing that we're here in front, in here at PIC. Is that right, everybody? Are we happy today? Are we happy today? Amen for that. Okay, when I say, how are you today? Can you say, it's all good? Okay, one more time. Are you happy today, Sir Aklon? Yeah, I'm happy. Okay, when I say again, again, when I say, how are you today? Please say, it's all, it's all good. good. It's all good. Okay. Are you happy today? How are you today? Are, how are you today? It's all good. Okay, when, when we say One more time, again, sir. when we say, let's repeat the chant yesterday. Okay, our chant yesterday is, when I choose God, you reply, it's, it's all, all good. good. Okay, and the reverse, when it, it's all good when I choose God. Okay, can you ask them, Denver? When I choose God, it's all good. Again, again, can we do it louder again? When I choose God, it's all good. Amen for that. I hope many of us were blessed by the messages yesterday. Okay, before we, we go further, we have a question and answer portion this morning. Okay, this will be based on a morning session yesterday. Okay, we have three questions. So I want you to recall as much as you can the things that you have heard yesterday. We have three questions. Okay, are we ready? Are you ready? Okay, we have prices. Okay, the student government have prepared prices for you and also the ARC. Okay, now we have three questions. The first question is, what oh, by the way, before you start. Okay. If you have the answer, I want you to raise your hand and please come up here. Uh, please come in front. Is that all right? Okay, if you have the answer, raise your hand, stand up and come up here, uh, come in front. Okay, now the first question is? The first question goes like this. What was the topic of our A morning session? I would repeat, what was the topic of our morning session? The topic of our morning session yesterday morning. Okay, please come, come, please come, come. Okay, come on, come, come in, in front. front. Come in front, come in front. Okay. Hey, what is your name first? Anton Ayala. Again? Anton Ayala. So what is the answer? Dysfunctional family. Is it right? Dysfunctional family. Is that Very right, good. Pastor? It's right. Okay. Uh, where, where's our, our prices? Okay, there, there. Okay, can you, you can now claim your price. Now, the second question goes like this. Based on our morning session with this dysfunctional family, where in the book of Genesis, what verse can we find our key passage? Dysfunctional family, the key passage. What is the key passage? Okay, we're in Genesis. At Genesis. We're in Genesis. Come in can front. You find the key passage. Okay, what is your name first? Rika. Rika. So what is the answer? Genesis 37. Verse? 3. Verse 3. Is that right, Pastor? Okay. Okay. Okay, thank you, thank you. Now let's give chance to those others in the back, back portion. Okay. I hope doesn't mean that when you're only here, you can only uh, understand. But I know some there students also are listening at the backside. Now I want for those who are sitting at the backside, I will give chance to those who are sitting in the backside now. Okay. okay. For the third question. Okay. For the peeps at the backside, according in Genesis 37 verse 13. What was Joseph's reply to his father when Jacob asked him to go to his brothers? Okay, I will... At the back side. At, at the, the back, back like for this... Okay, quit Jove. I can see quit Jove. Can 
Okay, from the middle to, to the back side. Okay, we have... Okay, we have here. So what is your name first? I will go father. Okay, what is the answer? That's it. That's the... Could you repeat? I will go father. I will go farther. That's right. Okay, you get it? Yeah, I get it. Just get the... Okay, thank you, thank you. So before we proceed our program, I would like you to give short reminders. Turn off your phones to silent mode, of course. And always remember to have your Bibles with you and don't chit-chat with your seatmate. Is that right, everybody? Are we going to do that? It's all good? When I choose God? Again, good morning, Sir Aklon, and good morning, everybody. Have okay, a nice day. Thank you for day. coming, and let us focus our mind now to our... As we listen to our, pro as we join everyone, and as we do a start of program this morning. Hello. Good morning, AUP Academy. 
Again, good morning. Before we start our, our um, inspiration, uh, we would like to um, invite you all to bow down our heads for a word of prayer. Let's pray. Our dear Heavenly Father, thank you for gathering us here this morning as we have the second day of our week of prayer. May you give us knowledge and wisdom from above and may you help us to listen attentively and give, give us peace and forgive us from all of our sins. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. For our first song, let us all sing His Banner Over Me is Love. Requesting everyone to please sing with us. For our second song, let us all sing, Do Lord. Thank you. 
I request everyone to please stand. Let's sing our theme song. Good morning, everyone. After reading this quotation or commentary, our praise team will sing a prayer song. Then it will be followed by a prayer of adoration and confession. After this first prayer, the congregation will be given two to three minutes to pray by twos. After that, the concluding prayer of thanksgiving and supplication. Then the praise team will sing again another song to conclude our prayer session. Let me read you to you from SDA Bible Commentary, Volume 1, page 1097, Paragraph 1. The early impressions made upon his mind, garrisoned his heart in the hour of fierce temptation, and let him explain, How can I do this wickedness and sin against God? 
Childhood is the season in which the most abiding impressions may be made. The seed sown in infancy by the careful, God-fearing mother will become trees of righteousness which will blossom and bear fruit. And the lesson given by God-fearing Father, by precept and example, will, as in the case of Joseph, yield an abundant harvest by and by. Shall we all kneel reverently? to be called your children for we are accepted forgiven and embraced you are almighty above and beyond everything you are victorious darkness sin and death are under your feet you are very beautiful and full of love how we adore thee our God we humbly come to you confessing that we have held back we have held back our things our time and even ourselves out of greed we have held back our love and compassion because of fear and pride our god you have overwhelmed us with such good gifts and we have kept them to ourselves for we have been selfish forgive us lord this prayer we would like to thank you again Lord for all that you have done for us thank you for giving us this wonderful week of prayer to know that it's all good with you we are now bringing to you all the requests and desires of each of our hearts only you know our pains our struggles and our fears may you grant our earnest prayers with what's best for us in Jesus Christ loving name we pray amen
Savior divine, thou hast made me whole. What joy is mine, what words can my gratitude tell? Dark were mine eyes, made by thy power to see. i 
Good morning, everybody. How are you doing today? It's all good. When you choose God, it's all good. Do me a favor. I want you to look at the person next to you. I usually do this at my home church at Sligo. And if the person next to you is a man, is a guy, is a boy, I want you to say, you look stunning today. Hold up. Don't do it yet. Don't do it yet. Hey, 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 hey. Shh. Don't do it yet. Come on. Masyado ko yung atate. Relax. All right. And if the person next to you is a female, I want you to look that person in the eye and say, you look fabulous today. All right. Ready? All right. And one two, three, go. Yes, I love it. I love it. Thank you so much. We praise the Lord for another opportunity that he has given us to be gathered together to spend time with him. Our message today is going to be continuing in the story of Joseph. And uh, we will also be discussing about how certain attractions can be fatal. Before we start, I would like everybody to please bow their heads as we pray. Before we open your word, O oh Lord, we lift our hearts to you in dedication, in adoration, in humility, and in forgiveness. For you, O Lord, are the God who provides. You, O Lord, are the one who plans everything and sets everything in motion. And so there's nothing that we experience that you're not aware of. And there's nothing that we do that you don't care about. And so as we make decisions, as we go about our daily duties, as we go about today, I pray that we could learn a lesson from Joseph that in everything we do, we choose you, for when we choose you, it is all good. For this we ask in Jesus' name, amen. What do you do when the gift and blessings God gives you is used against you? What do you do when accusers have facts to destroy you? My prayer is that in our time today, Joseph's story will once again provide for us a glimpse of how we can be better individuals. With a title, Fatal Attraction. The evidence is right, but the story is wrong, and the attraction can be fatal. Open your Bibles to the book of Genesis. We are working today in chapter 9, not chapter 39, I'm sorry. And we will start with verse 10 all the way to verse 17. Again, that's Genesis 39, verse 10 through 17. And I ask that you, if you can remember, to please bring your own Bible. And if you don't have a Bible, ask somebody. All right? It is important that throughout this week, you get into this practice of finding ways on how to dig deep into the Word of God. So here's what the Word of the Lord said, starting with verse 10 of Genesis chapter 39. The woman talked to Joseph every day, but he refused to have sexual relations with her or even spend time with her. One day... Joseph went into the house to do his work as usual and was the only man in the house at that time. His master's wife grabbed his coat and said to him, Come and have sexual relations with me. But Joseph left his coat in her hand and ran out of the house. When she saw that Joseph had left his coat in her hands and had run outside, she called to the servants in her house and said, Look, these, this Hebrew slave was brought here to shame us. He came and tried to have sexual relations with me, but I screamed. My scream scared him, and he ran away, but he left his coat with me. She kept his coat until her husband came home. 
And she told him the same story. She said, this Hebrew slave you brought here came in to shame me. Joseph had been with his father, father's, uh, Joseph had been his father's beloved son, but now he was nothing in a, la in a foreign land. Everything he had, everything he had gone for or was known for is now totally lost. His identity has now been lost. Joseph's brothers hated him for being all things they were not. And remember, the things that Joseph was was also a blessing and a gift that was given by God. They hated him. His brothers hated him for his honesty, his integrity, and they hated him because he was loved and favored by his father. We have learned yesterday that God gave Joseph various dreams of greatness, and he disclosed it to his brothers. As a result, they hated him even more. And we're using the word here, hate. Hate is a strong word, and that's exactly how Joseph's brothers felt. The depths of your battle gives insight into the greatness of the potential that God has this deposited for you. As a matter of fact, what you carry determines your battles. Whenever you're going somewhere higher, there will be something more noticeable and increase in the demonic attacks and activity against you. What do I mean by this? I don't know if... If your school still goes to Mount Makulot, does anybody know Mount Makulot? So not, not quite a practice these days, right? Well, this was some of the places that I fondly remember. So Mount Makulot is not too far from here, I think. I don't know. I don't remember anymore. Um, and um, this was another opportunity where my friends and I could just take an entire day going up the mountain and coming back down. See, whenever we had activities like that, I enjoyed it because one, I was not in the classroom, and number two, I got to hang out with my friends. But there were certain friends also that I wanted to impress when I'm climbing the mountain. Guys, you know what I'm talking about? You know, when, when you're walking up the mountain, you always try to extend your hand, you try to help that somebody, even if they don't really need it. You know, it's not anymore going up the mountain, but you're still pretending like you're the stronger guy trying to help all the ladies get up to the mountain. You know how that is? And then I would bring a, a bottle of water. I would bring other things, a bandana, in case they, you know, they hurt themselves. Like, I had a Band-Aid. I mean, I was, I was the medic of the entire hiking club, right? And the more stuff I carried with me, the harder the uphill climb was for me. But I did it because I was trying to really impress other people. It's the same thing that happens in our life. When we pack unnecessary stuff with us, the battles become harder and the inclines become tougher. Perhaps you're in a battle in your life right now. Some people may have convinced you that the issues, the challenges, or problems that you're going through in life is because of the choices you have made or because of the sin that you have caused. But that's not so. A student yesterday asked me, Sir, bakit kung sino pang nasaktan, siya pa may kasalanan? Right? I mean, that was a profound question. I was like, that is a good question. And I started trying to uh, answer, and, and I really was trying to delay because I was not getting really the right answer right away. But what it is is society today blames us for the things that we are. Did you know that the trees that have mango fruits, or santol, I love santol, uh, are the trees that get stones and sticks. Think about it. Yung bang, pag namitas ka ng chinela, uh, namitas ka ng santolo manga, ang ginagamit mo, chinelas, or bato, or kahoy, or sticks, right? If you're trying to get some fruits off of a fruit tree, those are the trees that get slippers, that get rocks, stones, and sticks. If the tree does not have fruit, 
Nobody is trying to throw anything at that tree. Are you with me? Are you understanding this? So here's the thing. Sometimes in your life, there are things that you have been gifted with, and so many times you are the one that is getting more of the attacks. If you have the leadership skills, now I, I notice all the leaders that, that stay back here who prepare the program each and every morning and afternoon, and I am amazed at how you transition the stage. I mean, programs back home, you, you require paying stage managers, you know, and, and all these coordinators. And I see students, and I see the students themselves doing this actively. I commend this school. I commend you students for giving your all. But there are some of you who understand what I'm talking about because some of you are natural born leaders. And what happens is because you're a naturally born leader, the pressure, the expectations, and the challenges are greater for you than those individuals who just prefer sitting back, not stressing at all, just relaxing, and taking a back seat in whatever is happening. Scripture tells us that even the righteous suffer. But you're not alone in this battle, I can assure you. God is with you. You have to trust His plan. You have to be vigilant. You have to guard your secrets, be prayerful, be wise, be bold. No matter the attacks against you, you'll step into this greatest season of your life. For when you choose God, it's all good. Pain and sorrows do not last forever. A change is coming your way. You're on a verge of a major breakthrough. You're about to experience a divine turnaround in your life. Don't give up if you're the one suffering right now. Don't give up if you're experiencing difficulties in your life right now. The night will soon be over. The sun is starting to rise on the horizon. In Egypt, Joseph was promoted from a slave to be a domestic manager having authority over all the workers in the household of Potiphar. This brought him into regular contact with Potiphar's beautiful wife. She was attracted to his good looks, and she made it his target to sleep with him. It was his target. It was his mission. You know, I do have friends who are really good-looking. Like, they're really good-looking. It's just like you look at them and are like, man, you're just good-looking. It almost feels like when God was creating these friends of mine, He was really like taking the time. He was like, you know, I'm going to make the shape of this face a little more symmetrical. I'm going to make that eyes a little bit more figurative. And then I'm going to shape the chin, the cheek, and then I'm going to make sure that that hair is, is, is really flowing, right? Like, like, it's almost like God really took the time, like, to create these friends of mine. And then he arrived in creating me. He was, like, in a hurry, right? Like, he forgot that I needed some height or something, right? Like, he, because he spent all that time with my friends, he's like, oh, you know, Mark can go and preach up front. That's good. Let's move on. Like, Yo, Lord, what happened? Like, you forgot, you know? And sometimes, though, I feel like these friends of mine who are just good-looking are also struggling because the people who they love start feeling jealous when somebody pays more attention at them than the one who's supposed to give them the attention. Are you with me? Sometimes the gift that God gives us is utilized by the devil to attack us. Now, I'm not saying if you're good-looking, you know, you better watch out. But if you're good-looking, you have a gift that God has given you that you need to be careful about, that the devil does not take you down with. So have you been gifted with other things? Do you have a house? Do you have a car? Do you have many others that only people dream about? and you're, you're, they're praying for, but you already have it? Do you have the smart brains and the straight A grades that others could only wish for? 
To the adults in the room, do you have the master's degree? Do you have a doctorate degree? Are you tenured in your service? Do you have a vast international experiences that others can even experience because they've never even left the Philippines? Just like Joseph, your blessing is a potential target of the devil to take you down. What are you doing in your life to protect yourself from these eminent downfalls? Joseph, a God-fearing man, rejected all the advances that Potiphar's wife had targeted for him. But she was determined. Jesus must have really been so, uh, Joseph must have really been so attractive. It's no wonder why his father was also favoriting Joseph. As the temptation increased, Joseph could not change jobs. He was a slave. But with, all, with holy determination, he refused to sleep with Potiphar's wife. He refused to give into her sexual demands. Because she could not get what she wanted, she then became enraged and vowed to herself that if he, I can't have Joseph, no one can. Because she could not get what she wanted, she became so enraged and vowed that she was going to get Joseph. One day, when, one, when no one else was in the house and Joseph came in to do his work, she made her move. Let me pause a little bit in this section of, of passage. Ladies and gentlemen, do not put yourself in a situation where you will have potential mistakes. A lesson we can learn from the story of Joseph is that when he was alone, the devil had more means to take him down. Never be with alone with somebody that you can get in trouble with. That could be with the opposite gender, or we could be with a friend of yours who has a bad intention or bad vice, or bad habit that he's trying to get you to, t uh, to taste, to test, or to experience. Learn this lesson from Joseph. Never put yourself in a situation on, or in a space where it's just you and another person who can get you in trouble. Take note of this. Joseph, uh, as, as, as Potiphar's wife, tried to make a move on Joseph, she grabbed him by his coat and begged him to sleep with him just one time. And Joseph said no. He struggled with her and fled out of the house, abandoning his coat that she had stripped off of him. Take note of this. Once again, Joseph's coat is stripped away from him. Whereas yesterday we talked about the coat of many collars his dad had made for him, which was stripped away by his brothers, this time, his servant coat was ripped away from him by his boss's wife. What is up with Joseph and coats being removed from him? An innocent man was now convicted and imprisoned. Perhaps someone here today has been unfairly accused. False accusation can come in many shapes and sizes, physical, emotional, and social. In a physical sense, friends can accuse you. Family members can lie about you. Colleagues in the places of work can conspire against you. Sometimes, some people just question even your motives, even if they're intended to be good. And sometimes, your words can be twisted. Sometimes, people hear what they want to hear regardless of the facts. Sometimes we'll be hated and deliberately misquoted. Sometimes we'll be the victims of a whispering campaign where we can even pin down the things that are said against us. And you know these people who are the bridge? You know when you have a crush and you have this bridge person? And this person is the one who's supposed to pass on the message? It's like, hey, tell my friend I said hello, good morning. And then somehow the bridge also wants your friend. And this bridge says, oh, all she said was good morning. I think she's supposed to say good morning, hi, hello, how are you doing? 
And next thing you know, your words are being twisted. And for some reason, the bridge is now closer than the one who's trying to use the bridge. Right? Many times we are put in these situations where we don't choose it, others do, but we are left without. We are left the one in the negative. We are the ones who are suffering by it. And sometimes we're accused wrongly. Sometimes the gift of good looks and the gift of, of blessings, the gift of energy, the gift of life that we have is used against us and so much that we are put down and destroyed by it. Before the story of Joseph could even make it to court, everyone who heard the version of the story by Potiphar's wife already believed her. They all judged and condemned Joseph. Before he could be proven innocent, they already condemned him guilty. See, someone here today hearing my voice is probably relating to the story and life of Joseph. Before anyone could hear your story, they have already judged you. Before anyone could hear your explanation about your side of the story, they have already judged you. And we judge others as well. Sometimes the judgment is correct, but most oftentimes it isn't. And yet our treatment of others is based on our own judgment. Judgment places a wall between you and the person you're judging. Everyone has a story. Not only did those who heard the story of Joseph and Potiphar's wife believe her, but they went around town spreading the story, gossiping about this drama that was unfolding in Potiphar's household. Sometimes the attractions created by God becomes fatal to our future because someone has accused us falsely. Here's what the story of Joseph also teaches us. Your story, no matter how traumatic and difficult or judged it might be, we need to hear the truth. We need to know the real story before we judge. If you do not know what is going on, why someone is behaving in a certain way, or why things appear as they do, rather than moving around and telling, retelling the story, if you don't know firsthand what's going on, do not pass on the story. Because that's how gossip spreads. And what happens when you spread gossip is that you add your own interpretation, you add your own version, you add your own filter, you add your own opinion, you add your own judgment to the story without even knowing what is the reality. And when we do that, we hurt people. And I shared it with some of the students today, uh, yesterday. I said that hurt people, grade 10, help me out. Hurt people, hurt people, hurt people. People who are hurt have the tendency of hurting other people. And so the chances are when you are judged, it's because you've also judged somebody else. And so when gossips come around, passing on information that we're not firsthand familiar with is not good at all. That does not help in the healing of a surrounding, of an environment of people that are supposed to be God's people. We need to look beneath the surface so that you can judge correctly. That is found in John 7, 24. Someone here has been a victim of someone being judged. But if that is you, forgive. Hand it over to God. Let Him fight your battles. Refuse to let people discourage you and derail you. Keep pressing forward because God is at work. For when you choose God, it's all good. It's all good. If Joseph's story is your story, I want you to know that it's not over. The story of your life is not yet over. That's the beautiful part about the story of Joseph. During the down times of Joseph's life, the story was never over. 
As the story of Joseph goes, it is when the ups of his life are happening is when the stories are coming to its climax. So if you're experiencing a downturn, if you're experiencing something that's difficult in your life right now, if you're suffering, if you're down and depressed and you're just sad, I want you to hear my voice. When you choose God, it's all good. Your story is not yet over. It doesn't matter what you're going through. This too shall pass. This trial, this pain, this injustice, this oppression and false accusation that depresses you shall also pass. When you choose God in all of your struggles, it really turns out to be all good. You're going to go into higher heights. Your best is yet to come. The God who rescued Joseph will also rescue you. And I know that because that is a promise that God himself has given to his children. As the pianists come forward to the piano and the singers come up front on, on stage, I want to appeal to you right now, those of you who are hearing my voice. You have a story. And perhaps your story, nobody ever knows. But your story right now is at a moment where it seems like nobody cares. Your story right now feels like everybody is just going after you. Perhaps your story right now is that it hurts and that it's broken and that your life seemed to be ruined and people just continue to ruin your life. If this is you, learn from the story of Joseph. Your story is not over yet. And so as the singers sing and as the piano plays, I want you to take a moment. Take this moment to ponder upon how your life is going through right now. And if you may, I want you to just bow your heads. Just look down. You don't need to look around. I want you to really spend a moment right now to figure out what's going on in your life right now. And if you're in that moment of your life and you're feeling so down and you're feeling so hurt and you want to give that pain, you want to give that burden, you want to offer all of that that's bringing you down up to God, I want you to just, as they're singing, as the piano is playing, just get out of your seat and come forward because at the end of the song, I am going to pray with you and we will all lift up our burdens to God. But right now, I just want you to bow your heads. Just look down. Just look at the life that God is walking you through right now. And if the journey seems dark, if the journey seems frail, feel free to come forward as they're singing, and we will pray together here up front.
The piano is going to continue to play. I'll give you another minute if you wanted to come forward and you would like me to pray with you. I'll give you a minute right now. And if you're the one feeling that burden in your heart because you feel judged, you feel like the world doesn't even care, and you feel as though everybody's just going after you, and that's you, feel free to come forward. Don't be afraid. This is a time where we can give our life back to God. We can offer anything that may be holding us back. Don't be ashamed. Sometimes many of the things that we don't let go are the very things that keep us down. But when we let God know that we're ready to give that up, it's fine. And so if that's the you, I'm just going to give you 30 more seconds. And if nobody comes forward, it's fine. But I want to offer you this opportunity where you can thank you, my sister. Go ahead. Stand right here. Go ahead. And, and if that's you, we're just going to lift up whatever burden you have in your prayer. And just the last 10 seconds here. If you're offering that struggle, that pain, the very thing that God is not seems to be hearing you now is the time for you to let him know that god i really need you right now i really need you to come through for my life and don't come forward because everybody suddenly is coming forward don't do that that's not what this is meant for this is meant for somebody who really has something that's going through in their life and because this is a time of week of prayer we are going to ask for that prayer to be powerful we are going to ask god to offer offer that hand that he said only you need to ask if you ask i'm going to grant it to you this is the last five seconds if you're not standing right now it's okay you can remain seated because we're about to pray i want everybody who's standing to be up here god bless you there are many things that you're going through right now and nobody even knows. Please do it quietly. Please do it quietly. We need a reverence for this. Shh. Those of you who have come forward, there's some of you who are struggling, who are in pain. There's some of you who feel like you're a Joseph right now because somebody has stripped you of who you really are. Somebody has taken your personality. Somebody has taken your integrity. Somebody has ruined your reputation. Someone has taken away the money that you only had to be able to make it. And nobody knows about what's going on. But I want to assure you, God knows your pain. God sees your challenges. God hears your prayers. And the beauty about this is that God 
answers all prayers. God knows every struggle. And so the assurance today from the story of Joseph is all you need to do is choose him because it is going to be all good. Have the assurance that no matter how painful, that no matter how much you're struggling right now in your life, it is going to be all good because God, God has got you in His hands. Trust Him. Know Him. Get to know Him even more by reading His Scripture. Pray with Him and let Him know that you are giving your life to Him because He chose you. And so every, bow, every head bowed, every eyes closed. I'm just going to pray now for these precious individuals who have been brave to stand up to give their life to Jesus. Oh God, I thank you for making your presence known in our life. Father, fight against those that are fighting against unjustly. Father, let any false accusation assigned against the life of the one standing before you be corrected and proved wrong. Oh God, deliver your child from false accusers. Father, vindicate these precious souls from these false accusations, satanic intentions. May they rise up against any evil that comes their way, for they are your child. Scatter them away, that the, the, the evil is scattered so that they can stand as Jesus in your name as your precious child. No matter how far they've gone with this injustice, oh God, arise and let their efforts work against the evil. Father, help us throughout these trying times and give your precious children the peace they deserve. May they feel that strength that only you can provide. May they walk out of this place renewed. May they walk out of this place with courage. May they walk out of this place feeling like they were just filled by the presence of the Holy Spirit so that no matter what is going on in their life, they are able to face it and know that it's going to be all good. For God, we thank you for being the Father who assured that your children are always cared for. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Thank you all for coming. And those of you who have come forward and you require a little bit more time in prayer, I, I invite you. I make myself available at the end of the program so we can talk a little more. I pray God bless you. Be strong in what God does and know He's gotten taking care of you. May I ask everybody to please stand up for a closing prayer. Oh Lord God, thank you for the story of Joseph. That even in those times when we are blessed with certain things and it's used against us for evil, you have turned it into good. Lord, you see the hearts of each and every student, faculty, and staff family and friends that is in this room right now. You're the one, Lord, who knows their every story. You're the one, Lord, who knows their every challenge, their every joy, their every blessing. And for that, we praise you, we glorify you, and offer up anything that they need. May you answer their prayers. May you hear the desires of their heart. May the healing be theirs forever and ever and ever. For this we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Please be seated.
announcement for all participants for this afternoon session. Uh, we are together here at the right wings and also both students and faculty Sabbath, school superintendents, please come to the right wing for a short meeting. Thank you. Again, for those participants for this afternoon session, we will be having a short